Hello everybody, Zach Couples, physical therapist here, and folks, have I got an activity for you. If you are someone who needs to improve your range of motion in your upper body, yeah, I'm talking rib cage, I'm talking thoracic spine, I'm talking shoulder, shoulder blade, neck, all of it, then you might want to try this vastly underrated move, the kettlebell arm bar. That's right, folks, the kettlebell arm bar. It is an incredible exercise that can give you all of that, help you set up for pressing, and then some. The problem is most people don't coach this move effectively, and that limits the efficacy of the activity. But don't worry, your boy Big Z is going to have you covered. We're going to discuss all things armbar today. But first, let's go ahead and look at why in the heck we would program this wonderful, incredible, sexy exercise for our supreme clientele. Okay, Zach, you think the kettlebell armbar is the cat's pajamas. So what? Why should I program the kettlebell armbar for my supreme clientele? Well, I'm glad you asked. As the great philosopher Nick Carter once said, I will tell you why. The kettlebell armbar is an incredibly versatile exercise for enhancing shoulder and thorax mobility. And your shoulders are going to be worked like, whoa. In fact, I think the armbar is one of the best starting moves that you can use if you're going to be teaching someone to perform any type of pressing or reach. The caveat, of course, would be bench press, just because the scapular position is a little bit different. But folks, with the kettlebell armbar, the arm position that you are going to be utilizing is essentially the starting point that you would have with any type of press. The second reason that I really like programming the kettlebell armbar is because you can apply this concept to a wide variety of positions that will help promote increasing range of motion in the upper quadrant. Yep, I'm talking thorax, I'm talking shoulder, I'm talking neck. You can get it all with the kettlebell armbar. For example, the supine position can help increase shoulder internal rotation and lateral rib cage expansion. The incline position can further drive internal rotation and flexion, really helping increase your overhead pressing capabilities. If you need some of that shoulder external rotation because your high five game is whack, you might consider using a decline arm bar. And then the sideline variation, that just improves a ton of stuff because you're going to work on external rotation, horizontal abduction, trunk rotation, cervical rotation, and whew, you might close the lower rib cage if you're someone who's got a wider rib cage. Yeah, that's right, folks, I'm talking wide infrasternal angle. What you gonna do about it? You're gonna program the arm bar. That's what you're gonna do about it. The most common variations that I find myself programming are going to be the supine and sideline versions. So let's get into all the major keys when it comes to coaching the kettlebell arm bar. And we're gonna start in the hook line position, very simply. And what I want you to do is you're going to have your knees bent. You want a nice, subtle tuck of the hips. That's the first starting point. Now, generally what I'll do is I'll assist the bell with two hands into the start position because we wanna make sure the start position is on point right here like this. My elbow's gonna be pointing out gently, not wild and crazy. I'm going to get a very subtle tuck without engaging the abs. My knuckles are pointing towards the ceiling, just like so. Then what you're going to do, and here are some of the keys. You're going to take a silent breath in through your nose. Exhale. You want to reach the bell to the ceiling like this. So I'm kind of giving the ceiling knucks. That's going to ensure that my shoulder blade stays flush against the rib cage, one of the major keys. And I'm going to exhale as I do it to ensure my lower rib cage and ab wall gets smaller. It's going to look like this. And I'm going to hold, never letting my arms sag. And that's basically the way you would perform the hook lying arm bar. Now here are some ways people will screw this up. They're going to screw it up anywhere along some of those key steps that we talked about, which would be the subtle tuck, they might keep their back arched. There, you want a cue pushing the knees forward. The next way that they'll screw this up is they'll short arm the reach. So instead of exhaling and getting that flush scapula that we also desire, they're gonna just keep it down like this. Or they might reach subtly. 
your solution will be to either lighten the weight because sometimes the weight could be too heavy and that might be impacting their ability to reach. The other option could be if you are there to assist them, grab their form, hold them into position, pull them there nice and easy and see if they can maintain that position as you drop your arm. Just like that. Another issue that could potentially happen is they might not be able to create enough abdominal activity via the exhale. And so you might see the rib cage pop up. That's a problem. So we want to ensure that the exhale is slow, long, drawn out and full like this. I don't want this, right? Even when I just give like a very short exhale, you can see I can't really reach as well as if I get it all out slowly. See the difference versus I'm trying, I'm trying fam, I'm trying as hard as I can, but I need some airflow to get out in order to finish the job. Now, another way people will screw this up is a lot of times when they reach, because they're not getting a full soft exhale, you might see them flaunt the six pack and crunch down like this. You'll see the ab wall pooch outward. And that's not desirable either because you're gonna get too much pec activity my traps are kicking in a little bit more, and that's undesirable. We want to ensure that the exhale and the reach are soft fluid and they occur simultaneously. Now the last thing that might happen where people will screw this up is you might see the chin come down or you'll see the head tip back. Either of those could happen. If that happens, folks, simply putting something underneath the head like an Eric's pad can clean it up very nicely. Now folks, let's say you're feeling frisky, and I am for sure, and you want to improve the ranges of motion that we could get with this arm bar. What we could do is we could add a screwdriver to the arm bar. And all that is, is it's simply keeping the position and driving humeral external rotation. This will help you get some external rotation in the upper extremity because it's gonna buy us a little bit more airflow into the upper back. Generally, I will time this with my inhale because when I inhale, that's generally paired with external rotation and expansion of the thorax. So it's gonna look like this if I throw in the screwdriver in the mix. So I'm gonna do my same setup, just like that. Inhale, turn the arm, exhale, back to the start. Now folks, here's how people will screw that up. They will screw that up by instead of turning the entire arm, this is super duper common, they'll just turn their forearm and like, whoa, Zach, look at how much I can arm bar, look at this screwdriver, gosh. No, that's not what we want. We want this to happen through the humerus, no joke. So the easy fix for that screw up is literally grabbing their arm or making them aware, say, hey, you want the pointy part on your elbow, the electronon for you anatomy nerds, to turn all the way down like this on the inhale and then back on the exhale. And I'll literally grab someone's hand and turn them just like that. So I want this, not this, right? You can see when I, when I let me pull my arm down. Not my arm, but my shirt. You can watch, you zoom in. There, the electronon's moving. Here, it's not. Not much, at least. Now, the other thing you gotta watch when you make people aware that they need to turn their whole arm is they might still screw it up. And the way they'll screw it up is by getting a little too a little too uh, hectic with that, and they might actually end up side bending their entire trunk and moving the scapula like this. <sighs> oh, I really got a Z. No, you don't. You want to be very subtle and isolated to just the humerus. Right now, everything's okay. No matter where you find yourself. That's how it's done. No what kind of stuff but folks, life, let's say that's not enough, and you want even more. You're like Joe with that 90s R&B song. More and more, I get it. We can also drive further rotational actions throughout the rib cage by including cervical rotation. Now generally, if you're gonna be turning your head, 
I would grab a, an Eryx pad just so your head can stay relaxed and spin nice and easy. So here's my Eryx pad. I'm gonna put it right there. And what I'm gonna do with this is you want to envision that your head is on a shawarma pit. And you want it to spin on the shawarma pit, not fall off the axis. Because that spin is gonna promote some of the rotational actions that we so desire with the arm bar. And so all I'm gonna do is the same setup. I'm always gonna start with that exhale and reach, like so. I'm gonna hold position on the inhale. I'll turn towards the flex side because the more progressive flexion that I have in the arm, the more that's gonna promote rotation towards the reaching side. It's just like that, spin on the, spin on the shawarma pit. We don't want a huge whip over. We don't want side bending. We don't want upper cervical flexion like this. No, that's all ways that you could screw that up. So you want it to be inhale, spin on the shawarma. Exhale, bring it back. Now folks, you bet your bottom dollar that you could combine the humeral action screwdriver that is with the head turn and oh my gosh, you're gonna be loosey goosey immediately after. That, you just wanna time everything together. So on the inhale, I'm gonna turn everything towards the reaching side. Exhale, bring it back to the start. Of course, get set first by silently inhaling. Exhale, reach, let's get it. And that's how it's done. Give it a shot. Now you got a bright idea. You're thinking, Zach, that supine armbar variation was dope, but I want to kick it up a notch in Legacy style. I get it. That's where we can progress to the sideline armbar exercise. And that's really good because now we're going to promote a little bit more rotation throughout the forex. We're going to get a little bit of cervical rotation, um, shoulder abduction, and external rotation on the reaching side. It is money. I really like it, so I'm going to show you how to do that one. Probably want a little bit lighter weight than you did with the supine one. And your setup is going to be very similar, only this time I'm gonna have one leg straight and whatever side I'm reaching on, that knee is gonna be bent. You're gonna take a breath here in, exhale, and reach as you did previously. Now, in terms of the down arm, you got a couple options. Your first option that's gonna be a little easier is gonna have it to be out to the side, just like I am, right? Yeah. That's gonna buy us a little bit more. Uh, internal rotation in the lower segment, so a little bit more uh, expansion uh, kind of in the T6-8 area. You could also go overhead and that will buy us a little bit more uh, expansion. It'll be anteriorly in the uppermost segments. I'm gonna go with the low version here. Now, now that I got that exhale and reach, the leg is gonna drive the, the turn to my side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my leg up and I'm gonna reach my knee, not just adducting my leg, sometimes that's gonna re lead to a pinch, and that pinch, folks, won't help you grow an inch. You wanna reach the knee long, and as you're reaching and turning, you're turning, you're turning, you're turning, you're gonna reach your arm to the ceiling and externally rotate or turn it like this and get on your side. You wanna make sure that you roll all the way forward. You don't want your upper body hanging back. That's a common way people will screw that up. So. You're gonna be here, exhale, reach, inhale again, lift the knee, exhale, reach up. And then as I do that, this down arm is spinning down into internal rotation. I'm keeping my eye on the kettlebell the whole time. I can hang out and breathe in this position. It's gonna be great. As I breathe, I'm gonna keep reaching. just like that. Now another option with this particular activity is you could, if you wanted, you totally could, trust me, but what you could do is you could make it a little bit more dynamic. So I could exhale, roll to my side, inhale, bring it back. That looks just like this. I'm here, exhale, roll, inhale, bring it back, exhale, roll, 
making sure my chest is parallel to the wall. Inhale, bring them back. Or if you're gonna go with that overhead variation. Exhale, roll. Inhale, bring them back. Just like that. Now with this version, there's a lot of ways people could screw this up. The most common ones that I see occur in the upper body. One, and I had mentioned this before, people will kind of be just hanging back here and the chest is gonna be facing um, the ceiling, whereas you wanna make sure that you cue them to roll all the way over and it goes towards the wall, your chest is parallel, that is. Now the other way people will screw this up is they'll end up leaving their arm hanging way behind them like this. And that's super uncomfortable. It's gonna put some stress on the front of the shoulder. We don't want that, folks. Instead, what we want is we want the arm to be directly over the rib cage and reach into the ceiling, which another way people will screw this up is they'll just kind of let their arms sag down. They're gonna be adducting the scapula. Well, folks, how is adduction gonna promote expansion posteriorly? Pop quiz, it won't. You wanna exhale and reach to the ceiling just like that. Now, another way that people will screw this up is they'll end up arching their back as they turn. And that's because when they reach, they might dip down like this, use the front of their hips to kind of roll forward like that. The solution would be to really make sure you get that exhale of the rib cage and you reach the knee as opposed to letting it dip down like that. Hold, breathe, and you ought to be in business with it. And that's how the sideline armbar is done. Give it a shot. And those folks are the keys to utilizing armbar exercises effectively. They are an incredible variation that you can utilize to increase range of motion throughout the upper body. They're the perfect starting point when teaching someone how to do any type of reaching, and they're an excellent warm up tool. If you liked this video, you found it useful, please check me out at zackcouples.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, leave a review, make a comment down below. Tell me what you think and do you utilize arm bars? Where have you found them useful or where have you not? Thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience and I hope that you keep it real but not to the extent where things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving and I'll see you next time. Deuces.